Here we can see John Mountney, who was a, a lived in Northgate in Newark at the turn of the cent last century. He was born in Hoveringham in 1853, and in 1901 he became the second and probably the most famous of the caretakers of Newark Castle. One of the things he did whilst he was caretaker over the next 10 years or so was he formed a collection of various objects, some of which are quite exp now quite valuable, like a beeswax image of the moon, some of the local smocks that people had. There's a picture of the death of King John, a map of the siege during the Civil War, one of the big parade at the opening of the Castle Gardens. And from the Newark Jersey School, we have a spinning wheel pictures of the cemetery and of the castle. These were all kept in here and John was very proud of his little collection. In 1909, His Majesty King Edward VII, having left Rufford Abbey in the northeast, northeast of here, was driving through Newark, and I say driving because he was driving his own car, and without any warning to anybody, he just turned and drove into the castle grounds parked up and he was met by the only person available which was John Mountney. John showed him round the castle and he showed him round his museum and at the end of it he opened a visitor's book and said to the king would you mind signing our vis my visitor's book please and the king did. Well you can imagine what happened at the council meeting the following day. The king of England comes to Newark and gets met by the caretaker. It didn't go down right well. So the council came down and they took the book from John, offered him five bob for it, five shillings, 25p, and said, it's ours now. And they took it to the town hall and they tore the page with the king's signature on. They just tore it out, framed it, and stuck it up in the mayor's parlour for their use. John didn't like that, but there's nothing he could do because he was an employee of the council and in those days you had to do as you were told. And the same thing happened again three years later, in 1912, when, having decided to open their own museum, the council wanted some exhibits. Well, you can guess where they came for them, can't you? Yeah, they came here and they completely acid-stripped John's. They just took the whole lot away on the council cart and left him broken-hearted. The following day, he came back to his office here in this room, just saw the emptiness, went upstairs into the floor above, nothing there, so he committed suicide. And that was on the 12th of, sorry, the 13th of February, 1912. So on the 13th of February, 2012, we've opened this exhibition in, memory, in John's memory. And we hope that if anybody wants to come along and see it, all they have to do is go to the Gillstrap, see the tourist information office, meet the castle ranger, the current castle ranger, and he'll show you around and explain everything to you. This little, this little note here. And his little note that he left, of castles I have had enough, my brain is turned to batter, wise councillors come and councillors go, and all my treasures scatter. Yes, I'd like to thank Alan Tower of the Friends of the Castle and Grounds for giving me a little tour of the uh, remains of uh, John Mountney, who was actually buried in Newark Cemetery. So without any further ado, do come and see the, the, the exhibit. And it's free. It's free, so thank you, Alan.